Hello friends, welcome to my channel Pathology Master. Myself Dr. Parth Goswami and I am the consultant pathologist. So I am again back with a new video that is the hepatocellular carcinoma. Formally it is known as an HCC. So you might see that I am taking the topic from the different areas of pathology. So it will take a time to cover the broad areas of pathology for me. But you can check the playlist and you can see your desired video until then. So I, today I am taking the topic from the GIT that is the hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, so which are our learning objectives? So at the end of lecture, the students should be able to understand the basic etiology and the pathogenesis that will cause the hepatocellular carcinoma. And also you should be able to understand the morphology of hepatocellular carcinoma and its type at the end of the lecture. Now this is the new initiative starting in the next program. Now, uh, now the curriculum of the students are getting revised for the MBBS in the India. And so in that the learning objectives before the lecture has to be prepared so that students should know that what, he, what they should learn at the end of the lecture. So these are your learning objective. At the end of lecture, you should know these things. Etiology, pathogenesis and the morphology of hepatocellular carcinoma. So first, let's start with the introduction. So guys, uh, first be clear that liver is highly vascular organ. The blood supply is very high in the liver. It has a dual blood supply from the hepatic artery and from the portal vein that's why what happened it received the blood from most of the organs of our body that's why the common tumor of liver is metastasis because of rich blood supply so if you are asking exam exam which is the common tumor then obviously your answer should be metastasis but today i am not going to teach you regarding this metastatic liver disease right we will talk regarding the primary liver tumor that is the hepatocellular carcinoma. So if you have been asked that which is the most common primary liver tumor, malignant tumor, then your answer will be hepatocellular carcinoma. So today we are going to teach regarding the same. Right. Now the incidence is more common in the Asia and Africa patient. Incidence is very high in Asia and Africa. And the male patients are affected more commonly. Now usually uh, what has been observed is that the tumor supervenes on the cirrhotic patient in the 70 to 80 percent scenario. 80 percent case. I mean, I mean the patient already has the cirrhosis before development of hepatocellular carcinoma in the 70 to 80 percent. They have the cirrhosis. And then they will de develop hepatocellular carcinoma. And these patients usually develop cirrhosis because of two main common infections. That is the hepato, that is the hepatitis B virus and the hepatitis C virus. That is that has been associated with the cirrhosis and ultimately cirrhosis will lead to hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is the general introduction regarding the etiology. Now we will see the detail of the etiopathogenesis we will see it in detail etiopathogenesis how hepatocellular carcinoma develop and what is the pathogenesis behind it so so you so now it has been clear that it is the hepatocellular carcinoma develop because of cirrhosis the preceding lesion is the cirrhosis of the liver in which the hepatocytes get damaged and so there will be nodular surface over the liver because of regenerative parenchymal nodules. And this cirrhosis will lead to cancer. And the cause of cirrhosis is hepatitis B virus and the hepatitis C virus commonly. Now for the better understanding, the etiology has been divided into the seven factors. There are seven etiological factors that ultimately lead to hepatocellular carcinoma. So your first factor is the hepatitis B virus infection. So let's start with first etiology that is the HBV infection. Now what happened? Guys, if you have the hepatitis B virus infection, then what happened? This hepatitis B virus DNA, DNA genome 
will get integrated into our host genome so they will mix with our gene they will integrate with our gene and that's why will lead to hepatocyte damage and ultimately hepatocellular carcinoma this is a general understanding that how hpv will lead to hcc now what happened uh, it has been observed that in approximately 90 to 95 percent case of hcc in asia and africa they will show the positivity for anti hbc so you can you can understand that long standing hbs antigen infectivity will put you at the higher risk for developing of hepatocellular carcinoma so if you have you are hbs antigen carrier then you should be observed regularly you should consult your doctor regularly before the actually hcc develop into your body so the long standing hepato long standing hbs antigen positivity hepatitis b virus positivity is the first factor causing hcc okay second etiological factor is the hep hepatitis c virus infection okay now it has been observed that uh, usually uh, the hepatitis c virus is more potential in causing the hepatocellular carcinoma i mean the damaging power of the hepatitis c virus is more so if you have hcv infection then there are more chance of development of cirrhosis suppose you have the hcv infection then there is a more chance of development of early cirrhosis and simultaneously then after cancer hepatocellular carcinoma so the hcv is the more danger as compared to hepatitis b virus and in the developed country now it has been the more common cause in causing the hcc as compared to hepatitis b virus b virus which is most common cause of cancer in developing country like india but in foreign countries hcv uh, might be the main cause okay suppose if you have hepatitis b virus and hepatitis c virus both infection then obviously your chance of developing hepatocellular carcinoma is very very high and you have 3 to 4 times more chance of development of hepatocellular carcinoma okay now third etiological factor that is the main factor for hepatocellular carcinoma is the cirrhosis and and it has been observed that previously discussed factor that is hepatitis b virus and the hepatitis c virus both can cause cirrhosis of liver and simultaneous and then after it can lead to development of hepatocellular carcinoma so the macronodular post necrotic cirrhosis after these two infection is responsible for development of hepatocellular carcinoma so now until now it has been clear that hbv and hcv is the main ultimate responsible factor for causing the cirrhosis and ultimately hcc okay guys the fourth factor important factor is the alcohol intake if your alcohol intake is very high then you have the chance of development a higher chance of development of hcc approximately 4 to 5% higher chance but guys remember that uh, alcohol alone is not usually causing the hepatocellular carcinoma usually cofactors are associated like that of uh, hbv or hcv infection okay fifth important factor that has been observed until now is that mycotoxin usually what happen in the developing country like uh, india in the asia and africa region what happen the atmosphere is usually humid hot atmosphere right so what happen certain fungus particularly aspergillus flavus can contaminate your wheat grains and the groundnuts if it is poorly stored and such fungus aspergillus flavus can produce one toxin that the name is the aflatoxin b1 and that is responsible for development of hepatocellular carcinoma so the mycotoxin also can be responsible for development of hepatocellular carcinoma remember guys this toxin can be asked in your multiple choice question it can be asked in the mcq as well this fungus name also can be asked in a mcq so these two are very important mcqs okay 
sixth important factor for the development of hepatocellular carcinoma that is newly observed factors are certain food additives or food toxics now it has been observed that certain pesticide insecticides can lead to cancer formation sometimes pyr pyrolizidine tannic acid like that of uh, pollutants also can cause uh, that like of chemical also can act as an carcinogen and will lead to hepatocellular carcinoma the nitrosamine is commonly used as a food additive and that can lead to development of hepatocellular carcinoma the association has been observed okay now these six are the prune usually prune factor for the hepatocellular carcinoma they are more commonly associated but but these seven miscellaneous factor have the limited role in the development of hepatocellular carcinoma i mean the association is not uh, much uh, stronger Th these are these miscellaneous factor have the limited role in development of hcc so which are these miscellaneous factors hematochrom hemochromatosis then alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency then prolonged immunosuppressive therapy after the renal transplantation then other types of viral hepatitis like that of hepatitis d virus etc then non alcoholic steto hepatitis then tobacco smoking then parasites like that of clonorchiasis cystosomiasis then glycogen storage disease all these miscellaneous factor have the limited role in development of hcc so these seven are the basic etiology for development of hepatocellular carcinoma okay and now i will explain you that how hepatitis b virus particularly and hepatitis c virus will lead to cancer formation what's the basic pathogenesis so you have understood that hepatitis b virus infection usually integrate with our genome right they will integrate with our genome and that's why it will lead to cancer formation but at ultra structural level what hbv will cause that we will see okay so it has been clear that it will integrate with our gene and so it will lead to our dna damage and genetic mutation and that's why it will lead to cancer formation but one important factor for the development of cancer formation is that hepatitis b virus will produce one specific protein x protein the name given as an hbx antigen or will produce the hbx antigen and that will lead to inactivation of your p53 gene and that is the main basic for development of cancer formation it is a very important mcq that hbv infection will lead to formation of hbx antigen and that will inactivate your p53 gene okay now if you have read the chapter of neoplasia then you might remember that p53 gene is the tumor suppressor gene i mean it will prevent the tumor formation by certain mechanisms and it is known by the name guardian of genome it is your guardian of genome it will protecting your genome how that we will see in this figure okay so guys just see this figure normally whenever you are having some form of dna damage because of virus because of hypoxia because of uh, radiotherapy because of carcinogens mutagens because of any etiology if your dna is getting damaged then what happen your p53 gene your guardian of genome will get activated immediately this p53 will get activated and it will bind to your dna and what they will do they will trans they will do the transcription upregulation of certain target gene which target gene they will upregulate particularly one target gene the name given is p21 they will upregulate the p21 and guys you can understand only only this figure if you if you have remembered the chapter of neoplasia in the neoplasia you you might remember that uh, the cell cycle uh, there are certain cell cycle inhibitors to
to stop the cell cycle whenever mutant cell will enter into the cycle there are certain cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors and p21 is one of the such inhibitors so what they will do they will stop the mutant cell to enter into the synthetic phase they are the g1s checkpoint this p21 upregulation is the g1s checkpoint so they will stop the mutant cell to enter into the cell cycle i will explain this whole mechanism in the neoplasia discussion in the detail but remember that the p21 upregulation will lead to this g1s arrest and so the get d45 will take the time to repair the gene this p53 will activate the one important gene the name given is get d45 the growth arrest and dna damage so it will repair your gna so this is the master function of the p53 with the help of p21 upregulation and get d45 they will repair your gene so they will repair the damaged dna and that is the master function of p53 remember that and if the cell cannot get repaired then what p53 will do suppose your cells are very much damaged it cannot get repaired then what will happen they will if the g if the cell cannot get repaired then they will activate one important gene that is bax gene and can you remember that gene what is the bax gene yeah you are right the bax gene is the gene that will induce the apoptosis so if the cell is not get repaired then it will act, then p53 will activate the bax gene and they will do the apoptosis of the mutated cell so in this way imagine the function of p53 it will lead to dna repair and if it cannot get repaired then they will remove the cell with the with the help of apoptosis so guys now you can understand that if your p53 is mutated then what will happen obviously your mutated cell will get proliferated and you will develop cancer so that is one of the basic mechanism of causing the hepatocellular carcinoma it will produce the hbx antigen and they will inactivate your p53 gene and that's why you will develop cancer okay the mutation of the certain oncogenes that is the kras and the mutation in the receptors for the hepatocellular hepatocyte growth factor that is the cmyc and the cmat mutation also will lead to formation of the hepatocellular carcinoma there is also activation of wnt akt pathway now all these three we will discuss in the detail in the neoplasia chapter whenever i will cover the neoplasia uh, chapter right so that is also involved in the pathogenesis of hepatocellular carcinoma okay now what can be the clinical feature of this hepatocellular carcinoma if you have the cancer obviously whenever in your body cancer is present you will complain of the weight loss because of activation of tumor necrosis factor alpha you will have the anorexia and so obviously your complaint will be weight loss you will have prolonged fever you can observe fatigue in the patient and obviously there is a tumor in liver so you have the upper abdominal pain and if you will do so one tumor marker investigation that is alpha fetoprotein estimation in the suspected case then in the cancer in the 50 to 70 percent case the alpha fetoprotein level is elevated now how the hepatocellular carcinoma grossly looks like so the gross appearance is in the form of three way either tumor can be unifocal i mean the single nodule this is the unifocal lesion right or it can be multifocal see these are the multifocal lesions multinodular so this is the multifocal lesion or it can be diffuse infiltrative lesion this is the diffuse infiltration of the whole liver and whenever there is a cancer it has been observed that hemorrhage and necrosis can be present so this is regarding the gross appearance of hepatocellular carcinoma okay now if you will take the biopsy from the affected nodule 
affected area then in the microscopy uh, you can able to see the vascular invasion of the malignant cell and that is a particular property of the hepatocellular carcinoma i mean the cell will penetrate your vascular channel and as you have the hepatocellular carcinoma obviously your hepatocytes will get proliferated right there will be proliferation of the hepatocytes but in the uh, and they will arrange in the different fashion uh, usually they can arrange in a trabecular pattern the common pattern is trabecular right another patterns are glandular pattern or there can be cord arrangement or there can be solid nest if the tumor is well differentiated you might know that uh, in the well differentiated tumor anaplasia is less and if the tumor is poorly differentiated then ana then differentiation is lost and the cells are very large multinucleated anaplastic like and the giant cell also can be seen tumor giant cell so in the poorly differentiated lesion the anaplasia is more in the better differentiated okay in the better differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma it has been observed that there can be presence of bile in the cytoplasm so the presence of bile is a unique feature of the hepatocellular carcinoma in the cytoplasm of the cell and sometimes what happen in the cytoplasm there can be eosinophilic inclusion that is the collection of intermediate filaments and that is known by the name mallory dank body so these two feature can be seen in hcc and third important feature is the presence of pseudo acinar structure what is that that is the presence of cell plates that are widened by the abnormal bile canaliculi that will contain the bile you can able to see the dilated bile canaliculi within the dilated cell plates i mean uh, which are these cell plates i am talking regarding the hepatocytes the hepatocytes are arranged in a trabecular pattern and they will form the plates right these are the cell plates and in between the cell plate you can see the bile canalicula containing the abundant amount of bile and that is given the name pseudo acinar structure so that can be observed okay so guys you have to remember that in hepatocellular carcinoma typically there is a proliferation of the hepatocytes and usually what happen in the normal adult if you can remember the normal histology of liver then there is a hexagonal arrangement of of the hepatocytes right <coughs> sorry in uh, in the normal histology of liver there is a presence of central vein and in the periphery you can able to see the hepatic artery portal vein and the uh, bile duct and the cell plates are usually two cell thick right you can able to see the two plate thickness of the hepatocyte here what happen the cells are proliferate and they will usually greater than two cell thick i mean the hepatocytes will form the more plates just see here abundant hepatocyte proliferation this is the four plate proliferation four to five right so it has been observed that these proliferated hepatocyte plates will be separated by collagenous tissue and that is a typical feature of hepatocellular carcinoma just observe here you can have you cannot see the hepatic artery portal vein and bile duct portal triad is not seen and just see this hepatocyte proliferation this all are the proliferated hepatocytes usually greater than four plates just see these 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 are the forming plates right this is one two this is three and this one is fourth one <coughs> sorry so this is the proliferated hepatocytes they will forming the more than three cell plates and you can able to see here pseudo acinar structure this is the bile containing structure this is a pseudo acinar structure so it it can be seen in hepatocellular carcinoma and can you able to appreciate one eosinophilic body in the cytoplasm just see that this is the eosinophilic inclusion that is a collection of intermediate filament and it is known by the name mallory dank dank body so it can be seen in hepatocellular carcinoma so now it has been clear that the common pattern observed in hepatocellular carcinoma is the trabecular pattern right the common pattern is trabecular and obviously this is the carcinoma so in the car so in the any malignancy 
uh, there is a loss of differentiation and you can able to see the features of anaplasia so which are the features of anaplasia so remember guys the features of anaplasia here it has been observed that there can be presence of pleomorphism right pleomorphism means variation in size and shape of the cell that is a pleomorphism second important feature is high nc ratio usually nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio is 1 times 6 i mean the cytoplasm is 4 to 6 times higher 1 gem 4 or 1 gem 6 is the normal ratio as compared to nucleus cytoplasm is 4 to 6 times higher but in cancer what happened the nc ratio is usually 1 gem 1 so there will be presence of high nc ratio and sometime within the nucleus you can able to see the unstained portion that is known as nucleoli so the prominent nucleoli can be seen and you have to remember that these hepatocytes can be separated by fibrous tissue, but desmoplasia is mild variety. If the tumor is poorly differentiated, then you can see the another feature of uh, anaplasia that is a tumor giant cell, right? Okay. So traditionally, okay, this is in somewhat detail. If you can remember these points, then it will be good for you, or else you can escape. Okay. The hepatocellular carcinoma is usually divided into three grades that is well differentiated moderately differentiated and the poorly differentiated so in the well differentiated tumor these proliferated hepatocytes are forming the thin plate and the cells having the minimal atpr not marked atpr not marked pleomorphism right the features of anaplasia is less and the cells are smaller so you might wonder that it is a case of hepatocellular adenoma so the diagnosis is difficult up to this stage in the well differentiated tumor the diagnosis is not easy but unfortunately this is the common pattern and the hepatocyte cell plate is usually greater than two plate thickness so it is very difficult to diagnose the case of well differentiated hcc now if differentiation is somewhat loss and the prominent nucleoli is seen there is a marked pleomorphism then the tumor is poorly differentiated remember that but if the features are intermediate between the well differentiated and poorly differentiated like that of four cell plate thick then it is moderately differentiated tumor pseudo snr structure is seen here in a moderately differentiated tumor and the nucleoli can be seen tumor giant cells also can be seen but if the cells are very danger and the pleomorphism is extensively high then you have to label the cases and poorly differentiated not moderately differentiated here the pleomorphism is very much high and the prominent nucleoli and the cells are very anaplastic so these are the three grades well differentiated moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated okay one variant of hepatocellular carcinoma is the steatohepatitic hepatocellular carcinoma. The name itself suggests steatosis means fatty liver and hepatitis means uh, inflammation of the liver. So here obviously there can be presence of association of steatosis as well as inflammation and because of hepatitis fibrosis also can be developed. So pericellular fibrosis also can be seen. So if you observe these two structures, steatosis and hepatitis, then along with hepatocellular carcinoma features, then the name given is steatohepatic hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, this is important MCQ, which can be positive stain for hepatocellular carcinoma. So you have to remember that in 80 to 90 percent case, the HEPA1 is positive. Another positive IHC stains are carcino embryonic antigen cam 5.2 alpha fetoprotein transferrin and alpha 1 antitrypsin so these are the these are the positive stains for hepatocellular carcinoma okay guys so until now we have discussed about the common variant traditional variant of hepatocellular carcinoma another variant was titohepatic hepatocellular carcinoma now third variant of hepatocellular carcinoma that is very important is the fibrolamellar carcinoma the name itself suggests here the particular feature present is fibrosis 
the proliferated hepatocytes will get separated by the fibrous tissue and that's why the name of fibrolamellar carcinoma is given. It is usually seen in young adult and the female is affected more common as compared to male. In the traditional variant of HCC, male were affected commonly, here the female is affected more commonly. And it is not associated with hepatitis B virus, C virus or cirrhosis. I mean it, is, it, it, it has been not associated with viral hepatitis and cirrhosis. It is a totally different entity of the hepatocellular carcinoma. And the alpha fetoprotein level also is a within range. Here elevated, elevated biochemical marker is the neurotensin not alpha fetoprotein. So here which tumor marker is positive that is neurotensin it's an important mcq and guys why you have to report such hepatocellular carcinoma if you have observed it in biopsy because the prognosis is very good so you have to be accurate in the diagnosis of fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma if it is present i will show you the figure just see this is the figure of hepatocellular carcinoma these all are the proliferated hepatocytes clear these are the solid seat of hepatocytes and you can see that they are separated by the fibrous tissue these are the fibrous tissue dense dense collagenous tissue fibrous stroma is seen so the code of hepatocytes will get separated by fibrous stroma that is particular feature of fibrolamellar carcinoma now what is the treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma so guys remember that the common mode of treatment is surgical resection whenever you have nodules of hepatocellular carcinoma. You can do the radiofrequency ablation. The another recent mode of therapy is transarterial chemoembolization. But if your solitary tumor is 5 cm or less in size and if you have multiple nodules of 3 cm or less then ideal treatment is liver transplantation. So this is regarding the treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma. So guys, this is the basic funda of the hepatocellular carcinoma. Again, I am summarizing guys. Remember that the common etiology is hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus infection. That will lead to formation of cirrhosis. And so you will develop hepatocellular carcinoma. And the main pathogenesis is hepatitis B virus will produce HBX antigen and that will lead to inactivation of your P53 gene that is your tumor suppression gene that will repair your cell and if they cannot repair they, this P53 will remove the mutated cell by the apoptosis. So this virus hepatitis B virus will produce HBX antigen and it will inactivate your P53. So you are handicapped and you can develop hepatocellular carcinoma because of inactivation of P53 gene, right? Mm -hmm. And the another factors could be cirrhosis, alcohol, then miscellaneous factors, then fungal toxin like that of aflatoxin B1 that can contaminate your wheat grain and all that, right? Now, what will you observe grossly? Grossly, there can be single or multiple nodules, right? There can be single or multiple nodules or it can diffuse, infiltrate your liver. And if you, de if you do the microscopy, then there will be proliferation of the hepatocytes with greater than two cell plate thickness. And they will show the features of anaplasia because it is a cancer. The features of anaplasia include pleomorphism, tumor giant cell, high NC ratio, hyperchromatism, prominent nucleoli, etc. So you have to write down in the exam the features of anaplasia because it is a carcinoma. So that can be observed microscopically. And additionally, you can able to see the malary dank body in the cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm, the pink eosinophilic structure can be seen and that is the malary dank body. That is a collection of intermediate filaments. And because of collection of bile, pseudo structure can be seen. So guys, this and the treatment is surgical resection and the liver transplantation mainly. So guys, this is all about the in general discussion of the hepatocellular carcinoma. My reference for the two days lecture is pathological basis of disease that is the Robbins and the textbook of pathology by the Harris Mohan.
from the recent edition these two are good book good book for pathology and i have prepared this lecture from that two book hope my video will be beneficial to you in understanding the basics of hepatocellular carcinoma thank you very much guys and thanks for your patience